favor. we can just focus solely on him, all our cares, our thoughts, him this hour and this moment, be prepared, just begin to meditate on what we know about Christ. Common goal. We all follow the same leader and have like precious faith. I can't go any further or get in the same direction if we don't keep that in mind. And as I welcome those that are in this building and those that watching us online, I want to have that unity. No matter where you are, we all can be connected together by one blood, one man, one God, one faith, what we believe in. Many times I get up here, I don't know exactly what to say, or I have a whole bunch of things to say, but I know that in these times, there's only one focus that we can go on. us to take the time to just really meditate, and take our time this morning, and really reflect. We've had a lot going on this weekend, Christmas, family, great things happening, or not so great things happening, but to be in this place and be in this uh, environment people of God, there's nothing that can change or replace that. There's nothing in this world that can destroy the unity that the people of God have together. So as we stay unified with that Begin to pray, whether you feel like you should pray aloud or to yourself, but we pray into together, we pray with that one focus with Jesus on our mind and how he should lead us and guide us, how we should accept his love and open our hearts. 
to his presence. So for me, when I pray, I try to say less. I try to only focus on the things that bring acknowledgement to my condition and being open with the Lord and being vulnerable with him in my relationship. Because he knows all. He knows where you're at, where your heart is, where your mind is, what you struggle with. But for me, it's empowering when I can pray to the Lord and acknowledge those things. I'm not speaking or trying to preach or anything. I'm just trying to get us in the mindset. And I'm taking my time to accomplish that goal. And wherever you are, we're going to get it through this together. But I do that because it's prayer has always been told to be communication. And when I'm talking to someone, I really admire their input and what they have to say. And a lot of times I can talk a lot or say too much to where I miss the moment in allowing someone to put in their feedback or their outlook or their expression that they want to give to me. And at this moment, I want that to be in our minds to allow God to speak to us. There's many people that have giftings in this building whether God speak, is going to speak to you personally or God is going to speak through us for the whole congregation. And so as we prepare ourselves to pray, let's acknowledge those things, but let us have an ear for the voice of the Lord, whether it comes in those manners individually or someone speaking to to us as a whole. If you don't mind standing with me as we pray, and then going into our scripture after. God is wanting to speak to us and is speaking to us. We just have to learn his voice. already speaking to some of us. There's so many things in this simple concept of prayer, communication with the Lord. Lord, teach us how to pray. current day, 
whether we plan for it or not, you have brought us here. You have set us on a rock to stay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallowed be thy name. Allow your kingdom to come, Jesus. Your rule to be placed on our shoulders. Our acknowledgement of you as our king who lived to serve you, created us to have relation with you as our God, our Lord, our master, our friend, mother, father. Do you not understand the love that I have for you? Have I not proven myself and brought you through situations so you can see who I am, understand why I did this for you? You can't understand me if I stay in my divinity and eternity. But I came as a man so that you can understand me, feel me, touch me. I put my spirit in you that you feel my presence so you know that I am God and I am Jesus, your salvation. I died for you in when you was in your trespasses and your sins, when you didn't understand who I was, I shed my blood. Jesus. Yes, Lord. And I am God is involved every little piece of our lives, whether we know it or not. not know how, but just follow the leading of his spirit and what you feel right now. God would not lead you wrong. And if we can, in this, uh, um, in this moment, grab our Bible and turn to Hebrews. have to stop your expression to the Lord at the, right now, as we feel. Just getting our minds in the place. 
place of understanding that God is doing something in our lives. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. I wish, right now, I just wish I could spill my heart out. Pour it all out. Just shed tears. I wish I could just explain some of the things of, of faith. Short period of time. God has brought me to everything, you know, bringing me through new challenges. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him who have to do. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us Come boldly unto the throne of grace that we have, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our one thing to be connected to someone and they don't understand what you're going through. But to serve a type of God where you have to chase them down for them to even notice you. But there is a God named Jesus who knows exactly after us because he knows what we face. I mean, I don't know what much you need. <laughs> if you knew that you had everything that you need in Christ, it's natural to worry. It's natural to fret to hinder even your own self. But when I read things like this, look back over my life, and everything is right there in Christ. And if I could just find a way to embrace him, They could just 
opened themselves to know that God knows where they are right now. And he has the solution and the remedy for every problem. I thank the Lord for who he is and what he's done. Not just acknowledge the problem and leave us hanging. He is the remedy. And with that focus and the atmosphere the way it feels, let us allow ourselves to be open to the presence of God as we enter into worship. Hallelujah. Come on, saints, let's just create an atmosphere of praise and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we glorify your name, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, he wants you to open up your mouth and bless him. Not just for yourself, but for your family, your friends, your co-workers. Hallelujah. Your praise can shift the atmosphere. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you're doing, oh, God. For everything that you are, God, we bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, God. If you did not know, this will be our last Sunday in 2020, I believe so. This will be our last Sunday. And so we are going to give God a good praise. Hallelujah. And our minister always tries to set the atmosphere, tries to remind us that everything that we need is in Christ. If our minds can be focused, if our hearts can be focused, whatever the enemy is trying to do in your life, he's defeated. Amen? And sometimes we can sit down and we're just like, no, I don't feel like it. That's the enemy. You feel like it. Get up. Lift up your hands, worship the King of Kings, because not only is he worthy, but we can shift the very atmosphere, and not just in this building. I'm talking about the atmosphere in your workplace, in your home, when you're driving down the street, hallelujah. And the only thing the enemy wants to do is shut you up. And so we're not going to shut up on this morning. We're going to be loud, we're going to be proud, and we're going to bless the name of Jesus. I am grateful. Hallelujah. Every Sunday I'm grateful, but I'm especially grateful because today is my birthday. And I thank the God, and I thank God that he's allowed me to see another day because that's not so for everybody this year. And so I'm so very grateful. I'm praying for those who have experienced loss, those who were alone or just feeling heavy burden on this morning. I am praying for you, whether you're in the building or you're watching online. I am praying that the Lord lift you up and that he bless you. I'm going to sing two songs and I'm going to get out of your way. But we've come to just bless the name of the Lord. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Somebody help me say, just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all. You can sing blessings, blessings and glory and honor and honor. They all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus.
Lord, we need your presence, oh God. Lord, we need your anointing, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to turn the service back into the hands of the pastor. Hallelujah. But I just want to sing a little piece of the song. I'm going to sing an a cappella, so y'all bear with me. Hallelujah. But it's just in my spirit, and I just want to sing a small portion. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't thank you enough. Even if I tried, cause you've been so good. And you've been so good. And you've been so good. Cause you've been 
on and give God a good praise. Hallelujah. Because he's a great God. Hallelujah. And he's kept us even when we didn't deserve it. Hallelujah. 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 The next voice you hear will be of Elder Mickens. Hallelujah. And we thank God for an opportunity to praise and worship him on this morning. the Lord. Come on and give him some praise right now. Come on and give him some praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You've been so good to me. So many doors you've opened. So many ways you've changed. So many times, Lord God, you've healed. You've been better. You've been better than good to me. Anybody know he's been better than good to you? Thank you, Jesus. so elated to be with you on today. So good to see your faces that are in-house and those that are listening in, uh, our Facebook family, those that may be coming in for the first time and seeing us online. It is just a blessing to have you with us on today. We pray that something will be said that will encourage you in your walk with Christ, Something will draw you closer to him. Certainly Jesus has come to save us from our sins, from our iniquities, from those things that have separated us from our God. There's always another power that's fighting to try to hinder our progress, to try to block us from moving to that place where God is ordained for us as believers in him. What you have to learn to do is how to press. Even when you don't feel like it, even when your body is, is tired and fatigued, even when your heart is heavy, even when it seems like no one else around you cares, I want you to know that Jesus still cares for you. He still is concerned about what's going on in your life. When you have gone to the doctor and you've received a negative report, You've heard that a family member is sick and may be gravely ill. God is still in control. When your condition has changed, your financial situation, you go to work one morning and the job is no longer there. You find out that things have changed or have shifted in your life. Ground which you stood on that seemed so solid all of a sudden becomes very shaky. You're unsure about what tomorrow will bring. We serve a God that actually controls every moment of every day of every month of every year. He is always in charge. As a matter of fact, he says, I'm so concerned about you that every tear that you shed that I'm going to store them up. I'm going to remember your suffering. I'm going to remember what you went through for my name's sake. And if you suffer with me, I'm going to allow you to reign. Nobody wants to talk about the suffering way. They want to talk about the joy. They want to talk about what they have benefited from knowing Christ. It's more than just the benefits that we should be looking for. We should have a sense of urgency in our lives to say, I need to have a relationship with the Christ. I need to know him for myself. 
good that mother knows him. It's good that father knows him. But I need to know God for myself. And I need to know that I'm prepared to meet him when he comes. I don't know about you, but the older saints used to sing a song, Time is Winding Up. Get your business straight. There's no time to waste. Why? Because time is winding up. I want you to know the most important thing to be in him is to know him as your savior, as your Lord, and as your king. Because time is winding up. Get your business straight. There's no time to waste. I want you to turn with me, if you will, into the book, Philippians. The second chapter, starting at the second, the first verse. As you stand with me for the reading of the word. If you're at home, if you listen attentively, open up your Bibles. Hopefully you have your Bibles in front of you. Even at home, you need to make your area a place of worship. You need to make it a place where God can come in and fill your room. If you're sitting in your car, make it so that God can come and fill your automobile. Let him create the atmosphere. Or you create the atmosphere that is conducive for him to come in and dwell. In the second chapter of Philippians, in the first verse, it says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of the things in heaven and the things in earth and the things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Bless the Lord. You can stop right there. If you buy heads together, Lord God, we thank you now for this hour and this opportunity to stand before your children and to magnify and to exalt your name in this place again. And certainly we're glad that you're just not, Lord God, relegated to this one area, but that you are a God that is all around the world touching lives everywhere, moving, Lord God, in such a great and a mighty way throughout the lives of your children. Thank you because those that are in darkness, uh, you are helping to shine light upon them so that they can hear the good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and that they would have an opportunity to make the right decision and the right choice to come and serve the awesome king that you are. Now, Lord God, in this house, we ask you to pour out a fresh anointing in our midst. Bind everything that is not like you. Let healing come to those that are sick. Let peace come to those that are struggling in their hearts and in their minds. And then let joy come into those, Lord God, that seem to be struggling. And it seems like they have no excitement or no motivation to move forward in Christ. Lord God, do a work in them and we'll ever praise you and give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, it is our prayer, amen and amen. You may be seated at this time. If you look at this particular chapter in this book, Philippians, Paul begins to write unto the saints in 
Philippi. He adjusted it to all the saints, and he also adjusted it to the bishops, to the elders, and the deacons. He wants them to understand that he hopes that the blessings of God would rest upon their lives. The grace of God, which they have not deserved, that he, they did not earn, that this grace of God would rest upon their lives and the peace of God. That surpasses all understanding. It's amazing that sometimes when we're struggling and when we're going through different situations and crisis, uh, that we can come to a place in prayer as we focus on our Savior that even in the worst hour, the darkest hour of our life, Jesus can bring peace. Jesus can bring joy. Because joy is not like happiness. Happiness is dependent upon what is going on in your life at the time. What type of events are taking place in the moment. But when you look at joy, joy comes from just knowing that my Savior is able to keep me and provide for me no matter what situation I'm in or what condition I find myself in. God is still able to meet my needs. Make sure that he gets them to understand that God, who has not been seen by natural man, because we couldn't look on him and live, he is the father of all. He's created all things by his power divine for his purpose and for his glory. And then he loved us so much that he gave us Jesus Christ, who is the express image of who God is and is God incarnated in flesh. And that he came and he walked among us and he dwelt among men and we beheld him as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. But he was and is everything God is. What Paul is trying to get us to understand is that it's important that the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ be preached and that it be received among men that are lost in darkness. He says, I'm in this condition to where I know that I'm being held captive by the enemy. And I know that my end is going to come sooner or later, whenever God says. But I want you to understand this, that the gospel must be preached. Some people are preaching it because they're trying to say that I am not truly an apostle of Christ. Some people are trying to declare that I'm not truly called by God. And then there's others that are preaching it because they love God and because they love the saints of God and they want the people of God to learn how to live in accordance to the plan that God has outlined for the church. Paul says it doesn't matter. I don't have to defend myself. But one thing I do know is that the gospel is being confirmed, that Jesus is being preached, that the sinner's are getting to hear that Christ is a savior and that the lost can be found. I'm glad because the knowledge of Christ is being dispersed in the earth. And that men that were walking in ignorance and darkness can now come into the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad because, yes, we lived a life that was in opposition with what God's plan truly was for his church. But because he loved us, he made a way for us to come boldly before his throne of grace and find favor in his sight. So what I want you to understand that God is love. And he has offered love unto those that would truly believe in his name and take him on as believers in Christ. Not be a sensual sexual, earthly love, but it will be a love that will surpass anything you ever imagined that was good. Yes, I'm trying to take my time so that you can understand what God is saying to the church. Matter of fact, when he picks it up in the second chapter, he says, now if there be therefore any consolation, 
If I have any words of encouragement, if there's anything that's going to encourage you, if there's any comfort or consolation of love, if there's any fellowship of the Spirit. Let me tell you, there's all sorts of spirits that are out there. But you have to make sure that you are connected to the Spirit of God. Oh, many people get excited in church and start dancing and jumping. And when they leave, they have nothing that they are grounded and rooted in so that they can actually live out what God has said for their lives. So they dance and they have excitement, but they have no roots and no foundation. And so when they leave here, yes, they are a living a light that looks sanctified while they're among one another. But when they go back into the world, they take on the worldly attributes and manners. And so you began to see people that are supposed to be saved and full of the Spirit of God begin to act out the things that they have done in their flesh in the past. Because there is no changing agent in their lives. So they may look saved here. They may dress saved here. They may carry themselves like they are really anchored in God here. But when they go out into the world, they still begin to curse and lie and swear and backbite and gossip and do all sorts of things that God is not pleased with. But if you're going to find any comfort If you're going to find any love, it has to be through the Spirit and the leading of the Spirit of God. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't need to just have a small portion. You don't need to just have a taste every now and again. You need God, amen, to engulf your life with his presence. And the only way to do that is you learn how to create an atmosphere that says, Lord, just fill my life. Because truly the Lord inhabits the praise of his people. So if you haven't really learned how to praise him yet, you haven't learned how to create an atmosphere that is conducive for God to really come in and stay in the, your midst and work wonders and miracles on your behalf. God wants you to have joy. We talked about that earlier. Joy is not just excitement over what's happening right now. But God wants you to have joy because he has come to save you from the onslaught of the enemy, which is Satan or Lucifer and those demonic forces of hell. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. He wants to make you whole. He wants to give you power so when you face the adversary, you can look at him and say, in the name of Jesus Christ. You got to move. You got to get behind me. You have to go to yonder place. He began to command where they can go because you are operating not in yourself, but you are operating through the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, if you're going to operate together, then you need, as Minister Thompson said earlier today, to be like-minded. That means you need to be led by the Spirit and operating in the instructions of God's word, which places you on the same page with God. I'm not trying to please myself. I'm not trying to make a name for myself. I'm not trying to gather a church for myself or unto myself. I am trying to build the name of Jesus. I'm trying to exalt the name of Jesus. I'm trying to let people understand that there's power in the name of Jesus. I'm trying to help somebody to see him as the Savior that he really is. And the way to do this is to come together for where there are two or three in the midst of the Lord and then together in the same light 
likeness of mine, Jesus says, I'm going to come and be in the midst of you because your mind is stayed on heavenly things. You've come together to seek my face. You've come together to seek my will. You've come together to ask me what is my plan. You're coming together, amen, to get direction from heaven. And one thing that God will not do is when you are seeking him earnestly is turn his back on you and allow the enemy to come in and to destroy you when you are earnestly seeking after his will and his plan. So what you have to do is learn how to wait patiently on the Lord. You have to learn how to stay in oneness of mind. You have to put yourself in a place that says, Lord, I'm not going to move from this place until, amen, I hear a word from you, until I get some direction from you, until my soul, amen, can feel a breakthrough, amen, that comes through from heaven. And so let your light shine on me now. Somebody tell them hallelujah. Oh, oh yes, and while you are operating together, you have to learn how not to do things, praise our God, amen, through, amen, strife or through vain glory, amen. You have to learn how not to allow yourself, amen, to be bitter about what is transpiring around you, not to allow yourself, amen, to get into violent conflict one with another, amen. You have to learn how to keep dissension uh, from springing up in the midst of the church, for certainly the enemy is always trying to devour, amen, the children of God. He is seeking whom he may devour. He is going to and fro in the earth. And if you are not in connection with God, amen, he will come in and he will devour and cause division among the saints. Uh, but when you see him trying to operate in this manner, you have to learn how to humble yourself, amen, before the Lord. Lord, I don't like what I see in my behavior. I don't like what I feel in my emotional state. I don't like what's coming up in my mind. And so I am going to surrender myself unto you. I'm coming back uh, to your altar and I want to ask you to allow your mercy and your grace to overshadow me now. Oh God, let your spirit engulf my life and give Give me again another outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I need a refreshing in my life. I need a restoring in my spirit. I need a rejuvenation in my inner man. Uh, God, because I don't want to allow the enemy to cripple uh, my walk with you. I don't want that which is feeble uh, to cause me to lose step uh, with you. I want you to strengthen me again and not only me but my brother because we are connected in the body of Christ and so I don't want you amen just to help me out of this pit I don't want you to just help me out of this low place but when you lift me oh God reach over to the ministers and reach over to the deacon board and reach over to the first lady reach over to the mothers and strengthen them and lift Lift us up out of this low place. Give us some more wisdom so that we don't operate in our flesh. Because operating in our flesh brings enmity against God. It brings carnality and worldly amen, behavior. And so, Lord, we ask you to allow us to humble ourselves and learn how to esteem our brothers and sisters higher than we esteem ourselves. Help us to remember Christ and how Jesus came into the world knowing that he was equal with God and knowing that he had all the attributes of God knowing that he had the power of God. Uh, being in the form of man he allowed himself uh, to humble himself and be submissive a 
amen to the will of God. Ah, he allowed himself not to have a great reputation, ah, but took on the form of a servant. Somebody tell the Lord, hallelujah, ah, you're not here to be served alone, but you are here to learn how to serve somebody else. Let me bless you, my brother. Let me bless you, my sister, because the more I love on you, the more I encourage you, the more I strengthen you, the more I help pray you through your storm and your trial and your test. It begins to show the glory of God in our relationship. It's not about me, but it's about God being glorified in my life. Somebody tell him hallelujah. And so now uh, God came in the image of man, but made himself of no reputation, but humbled himself and became a servant and finding himself fashioned as a man. Ah, God, he humbled himself even unto death. In other words, many people are running around in fear of dying. But Paul says, a man to die, I realize it's gain because if I leave here, I'm going to see the king. If I leave here, I'm going, amen, to sit at the feet of Jesus. If I leave here, I may be asleep, but I'm asleep in Christ. And when that great getting up morning comes, I'm going with him into glory. Many of you have forgotten that this world is not your home. You're setting up here like this is your residence for eternity. But this is not my home. I look on the streets and I see the potholes and the raggedy amen infrastructure and I recognize this is not my home for eternity. I look at my water bill and my light bill. I look at my gas expenses and my automobile repair and I realize this is not my home for eternity. I look at the loss of loved ones and sickness all around me and despair. And I recognize this is not my eternal home. And out of this, I get joy because I realize that soon and very soon, we are going, amen, to see the king. Somebody need to say hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm getting out to hear one glad morning when this life is over I'm going to fly away on the wings of the morning. The Bible didn't say that I would have wings. Amen. But the power of the Holy Ghost is going to lift me up out of here. Somebody say hallelujah. In other words, I'm not waiting for two wings. I've already got eternal life living on the inside and when he called me I want to answer amen when he called me I want to get up out of this world somebody tell him hallelujah Oh, praise the name of our God. Look here, somebody. Amen. The Bible declare uh, that we have to press toward the mark of the high calling uh, which is in Christ. In other words, you need to look beyond what is in the world and recognize it is only temporary. Amen. Your sorrow is only temporary. Amen. Your struggle is only temporary. Amen. Your pain is only temporary. Ah, God, after a while, the Lord is going to relieve you of this thing if you don't faint. Don't faint because your blessing is on the other side of 
through. Press, amen, through the storm. Press in the midst of the struggle. Amen, put your shoulder to the wheel. And don't look back. There's nothing behind you. I said forward ever and backward never. Somebody tell him hallelujah. Put on, therefore, in the book of Colossians, in the third chapter says, 12th verse, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bound of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. And above all things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Saints, it doesn't matter what people have done to you. I know it hurts. I know it can be painful. What people say against you, false accusations, lies. But I want you to know this, forgive them. As Christ has forgiven you, forgive them. Because if you learn how to forgive, you free yourself. Can I say that again? When you forgive, you free yourself from that bondage and that bitterness that the enemy is trying to place in your life. And then you can forbear one another in love. You can uphold your brothers and sisters in love, even when you may not always agree. You can still agree that Christ is the head of the church and that he is the savior of all. And then it says, and above all these things, put on charity. I believe that it tells us to put on charity because it is love and love is God. It is love and love is God. Say that with me. It is love and love is God. It is love and love is God. If you can love one another, then you illustrate the very attributes of God. It may be a challenge. It may be a struggle. It may be hard at times. But I guarantee you, if you can just endure and love one another, show kindness one toward another, God will let his peace rest upon you and your house. Yes, blessed are the peacemakers they shall be called the children of God. May God bless you today. May heaven smile upon you today. And may you find peace. May the Lord fill you with the spirit, the Holy Ghost, prepare you for the coming of our Christ. As we stand to our feet today, I want you to know that I love you. And more so, the Lord loves you because he made you for his glory. If there's any in the house today that have not been baptized into Jesus Christ by water baptism, if there's anybody here that have not been filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, God wants you to be comforted. He wants you to find that place of consolation. But you can only find that in the Spirit of God being led by the power of the Holy Ghost. Whatever you need, whatever you lack, whatever God is doing, he's going to bring you closer if you desire to come closer in relationship with him. As the music begins to play, as you look to the Lord, there is something in your life you need God to do for you, we're going to prepare to touch and agree with you right now. 
We're going to believe that God is going to loose every shackle, that God's going to destroy every yoke, that God is going to release healing virtue right now, that your body may be healed, that your mind may come to a place where you find peace, and the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. I pray that you receive this word today, and I pray that this word bless your life. Y'all might as well get used to your pastor gearing it down a little bit more so that you can grab the word, grasp the word, and not only that, so that I can last a little longer. Thank God you're in here. Thank you, Jesus. there's one today, why don't you just step out by faith, just trusting God is going to do just what he said in his word, he will not fail, I said he will not fail, I said he will not fail, 